Hey there, this is Kenneth Wong, a Burmese American writer from San Francisco. In this episode, I want to give you a handful of verbs, the survival ones that most first time travelers tend to want to use. Let's start with the verb to eat. It's always good to start off with eating, isn't it? And that in Burmese is sa. I'll repeat it again sa. Burmese is tonal, so let me make sure you pronounce it with the right tone. There are three possible tones for pronouncing this. If you pronounce this word in a short, abrupt fashion, as sa, like somebody interrupted you and you had to stop in the middle of the word, that is not the verb to eat, that's something else. If you pronounce it with a midway level tone and stretch it out, as in sa, that is not the verb to eat either, it is something else. You have to pronounce the verb to eat as if you're calling out somebody to get their attention with a raised voice as sa. See those two dots behind the Burmese spelling? Usually words spelled with these two dots called wasanalungbao in Burmese must be pronounced with a high tone or a raised voice. So let me give the verb to you again. It's sa. It's not sa. It's not sa. It's sa. Of the three possible choices, sa, 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 you pick the third one. Let's have another verb, shall we? This one is thwa, to go. Now, just like the last one, you'll notice that this one too is spelled with two dots in the Burmese script. That means you have to raise your voice again. Don't pronounce it thwa, as if somebody is cutting you off, or thwa with a long stretching tone, but say thwa as if you're trying to get somebody's attention. So, out of the three possible choices, thwa, 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 you pick the last one, thwa. Think of those two dots like spittle coming out of somebody's mouth from shouting, or like exclamation marks in English punctuation points. That will help you remember to raise your voice. Another one is the verb to drink, thwa. Now, this one, you should pronounce it with a short, abrupt N, as if somebody's interrupting you while you're saying it. So cut it short when you say it. I spelled it with a K in the N in English because it's the only way to get close to the real pronunciation in Burmese. But remember that in Burmese words, you don't usually have a closing consonant. So don't pronounce the K the way you would pronounce it with English words like think or take. With the Burmese verb to drink, just say thou. It's not thou. Let me say this again. It's thou. It's not thou. The next verb I want to introduce to you is the verb to come, and that is la. This one, you need a long, lingering, stretched out vowel. Don't pronounce it like you're being cut short or interrupted as la. And don't pronounce it as if you're raising your voice to get somebody's attention as la. Those two are something else. It should be more relaxed in your vowel tone and a little bit long and lingering. So it's la. Out of the three possible choices, la. La la, pick the second one. Let me do this again. There are three choices. La la la, take the second one. So it's la. The last verb I want to give you is to return or go back. That is bien. Let me say this again. To return or go back in Burmese is bien. Bien is different from thwa, the verb that you learned earlier, which simply means go, as in go to a specific place. Most of the time, you'll be using the verb "bien" to talk about going back home, going to your hotel, or going back to your home country. Now that you've got all the five verbs for today's lesson, let's review them all again, one at a time. Sa, the verb to eat. Thwa, the verb to go. Thao, the verb to drink. La, the verb to come. And the last one, bien, the verb to go back. Let's repeat it again. One at a time, sa to eat, thwa to go, thao to drink, la to come, bien to go back. Here is the simplest way to use these verbs. Suppose somebody offer you something to eat and you'd like to try it. All you have to do is say sa me. That means I'll eat. Sa is the verb to eat. When you put me behind it, it means you plan to do that action, or you'll take that action at some point in the future. Similar to the way you would add will in front of a verb in English to say that, except of course in Burmese, the future action marker me comes after the verb, not before the verb. So it's not me sa, 
It's same. Let me say this again. It's same for I'll eat. Now, going a step further, you can even say something like I want to eat mohinga. That's a very popular dish made of rice noodle with chunky catfish soup. You start with the thing you plan to eat, then finish up with same. So to say I'll eat mohinga is pretty simple. All you have to do is say mohinga same. One more time. Start with the thing you want to eat, and then finish it up with same. The phrase for I'll eat. It's mohinga same. By the same token, if you want to eat hamburger, you'd say hamburger same. So that's simple, right? By the way, if you're lucky enough to be traveling in Burma, don't eat hamburger, even though it will be available to you. Try some local dishes, will you? Mohinga will be a very good start. If same is the way you would say "I'll eat," how do you think you will say "I'll go"? That's right. It's thwame. The verb to go is thwa. So if you finish it off with me behind it, you get thwame. I'll go. Just like talking about eating something specific, if you want to talk about going to a specific place, start with the place you want to go. Then finish up with "fame." So let's say you want to say, "I'll go to Shwedagon, one of the most famous pagodas you can visit." You would say, "Shwedagon fame." Start off with the destination Shwedagon, then finish off with "fame," the phrase "I'll go." If you want to go to Mandalay to see the old palace or to visit the famous Mahamuni pagoda in that city, for example, you would say, "Mandalay fame." Mandalay is the way the English pronunciation is usually read in English-speaking world, but the Burmese usually call the city Mandalay, not Mandalay. So just be aware of that. Let's keep going, shall we? Here's the verb to drink. Tha. Now try saying "I'll drink." That's right. I think you've guessed it. You can say "thao me." To be more specific, add something you want to drink. Let's say Burmese tea. The word for that is lapaye. Let me repeat it again. It's lapaye. So start off with lapaye, then finish up with thao me. The phrase I'll drink. So lapaye thao me is I'll drink tea. Remember the verb to come, and that is la. How would you say I'll come? That's right. It's la me. One more time. It's La me. You put the verb la at the front and finish it up with me, the future action marker. So you get la me. I'll come. Suppose you want to talk about somebody coming over. You start off with the name of that person, then finish up with la me. So if you want to say that your friend Jennifer is coming over, you start off with Jennifer, then finish it up with la me. So you get Jennifer la me. That's the way to say. Jennifer will come, or Jennifer will be coming over. Remember, the verb to go back is bien, right? So if you want to say, "I'll go back," that means bien me. One more time, it's bien me. If you want to say, "I'm going back to New York," you start off with New York, then finish up with the phrase "I'll go back," bien me. So you get New York bien me. That's the way to say. I'm going back to New York, or I'll go back to New York. The Burmese word for hotel is hotel. By the way, it's one of those English words that have been adopted into the Burmese language with the local pronunciation hotel, not hotel. So if you're chit-chatting and you're getting late and you want to say, "I'm going back to my hotel now," with proper Burmese accent, try saying hotel bien me. One more time, it's hotel. Biame. If you say hotel biame, people might still understand you, but there is a possibility that they might not understand you because they pronounce the word hotel differently. So one more time, in Burmese accent, I'm going back to my hotel is hotel biame. That's a lot to digest, so I'm going to stop here. You can go back to the beginning of the video and review all the verbs so that you can use them on demand. Hope you get to go to Burma and try some of the phrases on the locals. This is Kenneth Wong saying, "See you later." Now, my dear man.